Hello my fellow programmers, I'm done with my warm-up for day 3 of April Lead Code Challenge and this time I don't think I will need to read the problem statement because day 3 problem title is Maximum Subarray. It's one of the most well-known problems, algorithms in coding interviews, in computer science in general. There is a solution for that called Kdane's algorithm, if it's one of many solutions, but it's the shortest. I have a timer ready here. So I can measure myself, measure the time from uh, opening the statement to hitting submit and I'm going to try to get around 5 to 10 seconds. There's just one issue, whether I don't know if they will ask me to find the subarray with maximum sum or non-empty subarray with maximum sum. So if all numbers in the input are negative, then should I print zero or the biggest of those numbers? That's an issue. Depending on that, implementation is slightly different. I don't know if I should guess to try to get like five seconds to submit or maybe not. I could cheat. I could look up this problem in Neat code, but it would be equivalent to now opening it. It's stupid. So I don't know if I will have enough time to look at the statement. The code will be something like int answer is zero or minus infinity. Uh, int a is zero for element in the input. What will it be? A is maximum of uh, zero and A plus new element. Answer is maximum of um, itself and A. And at the end return answer. It won't be that easy. <laughs> I, I know it's very unusual to plan your health solution without opening the statement. It's just that this problem is so well known. Let's go. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. Containing at least one number. Uh, that's it. Not with zero. Uh, damn it, I don't know what to do. Uh, zero. How to handle all negative numbers? What if the array is empty? I messed up so much. I will have a second try or something. A plus equal X, then this, damn it. Then answer A is max of A and zero. I think this works. Compilation error, come on. So let's continue the timer. What? What? Am I stupid or something? A is not declared. I am stupid or something. <coughs> Accepted. I got cocky today. I thought that it will take me around 5 seconds or 10 seconds, but at the end I wasn't ready. Uh, let's Maybe let's try that again. I can remove all the code and start from the scratch just to see how much it would take me. Let's do it just for fun. Because you need an if for all negative numbers or, uh, what's, or what's the alternative. To write exactly what I did. So just for fun, still I'm keeping the first try. Start. So many typos. I really thought that it would take me around 10 cents. The problem statement, by the way, is given this input array, find a subarray with maximum sum. Here it's this one. 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus minus 1. This is 6 in total. The issue is that there could be negative numbers, so you don't know what subarray is best. And 
what I implemented is called Cadence algorithm. It's explained like thousands of times in the internet. I won't be surprised if even I did a video on this and forgot about it by now, because I saw this hundred times. For that single person who doesn't know what Cadence algorithm for Maximum Sabari is, it's about going greedily from left to right and taking numbers. And when you have some prefix already here, minus two, you don't want to continue with that. It is only a burden for you. You don't want to say that the answer is something like this, because for sure it would be better to remove this first minus two and you're increasing the sum. You get rid of a negative value. So you don't take the minus two. Then there is a one. You take it because it only helps you. You continue moving forward. One minus three, it's two in total. It's minus two in total so far, but it's negative. So for sure this will not be the answer. Nothing like, for example, that. It's better to get rid of that. So at this moment, when you got to a negative sum so far, and this is my value a in my code, you get rid of this and you say a is zero. I start from scratch. And you continue with that. Right now a is zero. After this element a is four, then you take minus one, a becomes three. With two, it becomes five. With one, it becomes six. And it represents this interval. Then with minus five, it goes down to one. Every time you have some sum, you have some sub array, you consider that to be the answer. And that's the whole cadence algorithm for you. An important detail in this implementation in the, for this statement is that we require at least one number to be in the sub array. So when I maximize a with zero, I say if I get negative part already, I get rid of it. Before that, you should consider the answer. Answer should first be minus infinity. And after every x is considered like minus two, you consider answer to be minus two and only then maximize with zero. Thanks to that, if the input will be like minus three, min minus two, minus five, minus four, minus two will be the answer. It's the best non-empty subarray. This is what they required. One other cool implementation is to realize that subarray is equal to prefix sum, pref sum up to let's say j, minus prefix sum up to i, minus one, uh, if interval is from i to j. Those are called cumulative sum or prefix sums. And then it boils down for every j to know the smallest prefix so far. The brute force for this is for every i, for every j, max maximize answer with pref of j minus pref of i minus one. That's easy. And uh, n square after we applied prefix sums. But the real solution in linear time Though it, it's worse than cadence algorithm because cadence algorithm is of one space. While what I'm doing right now, it is of n space and time because we are creating an array first, array of prefix values. Actually, it can be improved to of one space. You can think about that, why we don't need the whole array, but that's, that's a homework, let's say. Uh, for every j, this will be, I think, an exact code. Uh, for every j, we consider uh, the answer to be pref of j, answer pref of j minus minimum so far, minimum prefix so far. This is the best possible pref of i minus one. If you want to maximize myself minus some other value, you want that other value to be minimum possible. So here I, I will initialize min so far, min pref so far as minus as plus infinity. And over here, I say that minimum so far is minimized with pref of j. If you do all of this, for every j, you will find the best matching i before that. I will now get this to working solution with some detail and plus minus ones, like you cannot allow this to go outside of the array. One last thing is answer should be maximized. So we start with minus infinity. Notice this if, because I was afraid about overflowing int over there. I could use long, long. Let's try this right now. Compilation error. Minimum prefix so far. It should be minimum, let's say, so far. But it's minimum possible pref of something on the left from me. And output I get, mm, I print minus infinity. Do I maximize answer at all? Ah, that's interesting. Minimum so far should start being zero 
because that represents an empty prefix. If I have prefix up to position five, I know all the values, some of values up to position five, then I can pair this up with this. This represents like prefix of minus one or something like that. Sum of sub array is difference of two prefix sums, but one of them can be empty. It happens when sub array starts from the very first posi position. Accepted again. Cool. In this episode of Erito Complaints, I will say, Litcode, please stop using so well known problems that are just about knowing that fact. Like, happy number wasn't really about algorithms, single number was about knowing that or, or, or being a genius. Maybe not a genius, but it's very hard if you don't know that. Maximum Sabar is so well known. I would appreciate other kind of problems in this 30 day challenge. I'm not saying it's that bad, but I expected better. Day three is done, 27 to go. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video. Bye bye. Hello, programmers.